six, seven, eight, nine. People used to do promos for my show all the time. It was like a thing, especially for like artists that were like trying to break somebody. I had um, this promo that Premier did for me for, for, for his new artist at the time, Jay with the Damager. And it was dope. Like he sounded dope on it. It was the Premier beat, so of course it was crazy. I started my show with it every single night. I guess one night Big was driving around and heard the beat and hit Premiere up like, yo, is that, did you, is that your beat? Big was like, I need that. And, and so Premier called me up and was like, yo, I know I did it for you, but you know Big. I had no idea if it would see the light of day or what he would make out of it, but it wound up being 10 Crack Commandments, which is crazy. I should have got a little something, a little shout or something on it. Nothing. <laughs> yes, indeed. Take that, take that, take that. I think the thing about the tunnel is it was like the first place that you got to like see like your favorite artist partying with you in the club and just as happy to be. It wasn't so much like, you know, there was no bottle service, there was no VIP. Like you were in the same club that, you know, Busta Rhymes was in or that Puff was in. You all went to the same metal dete detector. I often remember arguments about celebrities not wanting to go through that, and that was unacceptable. Everybody went to the metal, full pat down, sneakers off. People at the tunnel were in close to partying. They weren't necessarily there. It wasn't like a fashion show. There were no bop. It wasn't like bottle service. There was not a sparkler. If a sparkler went off, somebody probably would have thought it was a gunshot. Um, you know, it was definitely a different vibe. But it was the beginnings of like if a song was starting to pop, and it and it and it did well at the tunnel, it was a good indication that somebody had something. If anybody who knows Pun knows he's like a clown and loved to joke and pull pranks on people and was a smart ass and all of that. And so he showed up on my show with a bag, like a paper bag full of cookies and told me that they were weed cookies and I had never eaten, I'd smoked weed, but I never ate a weed cookie. So I didn't know the difference. I didn't know it takes time to kick in. So he just keeps letting me eat them. Like he was so cruel at that time. Uh, I don't know why he would do that to me. There's like crumb, I'm talking about like the whole bag, like there's crumbs on the bottom. I'm like, you know, trying to be proved that I can eat these cookies and I don't feel nothing, it's no big deal. 15 minutes after he left, it started to kick in and it happened fast. And I felt like somebody hit me in the face with a frying pan and the whole, everything was just, everything was spinning and I was still on the air so I still had the rest of my show to do. I wanted to go to the hospital, it was all bad. I definitely was not happy with him. <laughs> After that. Whoa. There's a ton of songs that I never put out. There's two that are probably the most interesting. One is like when I first had my son, I made a song about him and about having him, and you could hear him in, like in the background. Um, so I have that. I still have that. I love it for myself. I'm just gonna keep it for myself forever. There was a third album that never happened. Electra gave me a budget for it. Thank you very much, Sylvia Rome. And I had ca called Khaled, like, you know, I need some help. I need some ideas. I'm, I'm in this little studio with my babies, like in the little stroller. And so he's like, you know, I got a guy. You know, he's been on a bunch of stuff and. Uh, he got good ideas and he's dope. You should just vibe with him and see what happens. And he wound up sending Rick Ross to the studio before Ross, before hustling and all of that. So I have about uh, five songs with Ross somewhere in a vault somewhere. And one of them is actually like this crazy, weird, like rock sounding beat that he loved. And you know, I know how to run Pro Tools and run the board. So literally I was engineering and Ross was doing, he kind of killed it. I kind of want to take my song off myself off and put it out at some point. Um, but yeah, I have a bunch of songs with Ross in the can that nobody will ever hear ever in your whole life. I just gotta come out with a porno. That's it. Have somebody release it so I can sue them. Get this hundred million dollars popping.